Hello everybody, we're all good. Big shout out to KR Couriers and Transport Limited for all their support. And thank you to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes. There I am, shitting in my car, having a little chat with you guys. I'm at a place where I do a podcast. I'm waiting for this dead interesting fella to turn up, to be fair. Tuggy, his name is. Old school, Liverpool legend. You know, hasn't been acknowledged enough, I don't believe. I met him in the gym. He's um, he's an old treasure hunter. He's trained with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Nebre. You know, he's been around the world. He's got decades of of stories to share. Hopefully we can get some of them in today. But it, it had me reflecting, you know, on, you know, obviously I'd say 50, recently and I was thinking about like you know my earliest memories and maybe going down and taking you with me on a journey of when I grew up to all the locations I was at. I was at a few yesterday in um in Wavesley down to Ashworth Estates and I was with my missus and I was like, you know, she there, right? You no, know, we lived there. Me and my ma and all my brothers and sisters, me and Joe shared that room. She round here, the old deed round here. She was looking at me going, this is all sad stories you're telling me. <laughs> and I think, you know, she's right, it was. And even, like, growing up, I don't know what it was like for you, like, people, you know, who watch this. But for me, right, I didn't, you know, my, my memories of school, you know, St. Ambrose ABC, we had this, um, we had this head teacher called Mr. Connor. You know, if there's anyone watching from, from St. Ambrose and the, the, they were in my year or they were in the, that era. They'll remember, you know, Mr. Connor. He looked like Count Dracula. He did. He had this slurred back here. These sharp looks. You know, and the Hammer House of Horror was on the TV back then. And uh, we used to sneak up and watch it and Peter Cushion and the other fella that looked like him as well. And it was the image, you know, and we'd... Um, We'd all be terrified and he'd give you the cane. Now, it was very rare that any of the pupils in school got the cane, right? Now, I'd get it regular. You know, I was one of those kids who was, you know, was bullied at home by his dad. You know, there was a lot of um, contributing factors that led to, you know, the way I behaved. I wasn't really an unruly kid at school. I was really lonely, you know, felt different. You know, I had loads of freckles, they were calling me shit splash. <laughs> I used to run in and go, these are the sign of beauty. My ma told me they were the sign of beauty. He said, your ma's lying. So, didn't know who to believe. <laughs> Kids were cruel. Um, and I'd get the cane for the most insane things. Now, uh, he'd go in his office. He'd ask you to put your hands out and you'd be like, damn. He'd have this big stick. And then he just get on this chair and just bounce down and wallop it right off your hands. And your hands just was you like you had a welt on it. It was horrible. It was painful. Oh now once was enough. Right? And it was this one time. You know, I must have been about eight years old, because I was still in primary school and we were on the market and speak. And back then it was by the parade, you had all the markets there and all the the, the Pakistanis had there. Had it going on, you know, and um, there was this store that sold these green soldiers, you know, these like little figures, little plastic figures, you know, I used to play army with them. <laughs> I had a mad imagination. We all do as kids, we grow up, you know, we have an incredible imagination. If you look at your own kids, you see the way they they play with their toys, and you know, that's how I did with these. And, um, you know, we were quite poor and we couldn't afford, you know, my mum couldn't afford to, to buy these for me. and. And I'm standing that close looking around, you know, one Saturday morning. Got this bag of soldiers and stuck it up me up me top. And I'm away with it. I'm gone. No one's on me. I'm at home. I'm in the bathroom on the floor playing with my soldiers. What did you do? <laughs> and my mum's walked in because she's seen me looking at them the week before. And I asked her and she said, no, she can't afford them. She's walked in 
<laughs> she's walked into the into the bathroom and there I am on the floor playing with these soldiers. She knew straight away, you know, she didn't even have to wait, where'd you get them from? If you haven't robbed her, you haven't stolen her. Oh mate, she kicked off. You haven't stole these from the shops, have you? What have you done? You haven't took them off the market stall. And she marched me back, right? That weekend to the same store with the soldiers. She'd done the right thing. At the time it was like, you're out of order. You know, she gave them to the guy on the store. And then she said, you know, as a consequence, as a punishment, you can have them. And I was absolutely terrified. I remember, you know, the Asian kid standing next to me, telling me to come here. And I'm looking up at him and my mum's walking away in the distance. You know, it was a test. You know, we don't know that back then, do we? You know, and, um, and I wanted to get away as quick as I could. And I bit him. You know, on his hand and I just legged it. You know, and I, and I thought that was the end of it. Went home. My mum said, don't be doing that again. On the Monday, the following Monday, I remember, you know, getting called into the headmaster's office. And I, I was confused because he hadn't been up to, to no good in school. He'd been okay. Um, he said, your mum's been in touch. She said, you've stole these soldiers off the market stall. You know, I'm, I'm going to give you the cane. You know, not once, but four times. So I had it twice on that hand. And twice on that hand, and he was sadistic. You know, once was like, fuck that, mate, I'm not getting that again. Put your hand back out. Whoosh. Again. Whoosh. You think that's enough? And your other hand. And you know what, as an eight-year-old, you get fucking welted with these these sticks, and then you're going home and you're getting your battered by your arthur as well. It was pretty shit growing up, you know. My mum done the best she could. She was pregnant for eight years. She had six kids within eight years, so she struggled. So I knew, you know, it was quite tough. You know, the teachers back then, they were all fucking pedophiles. They, you know, I remember they took us on this, um, and it didn't, like, come back to me till years later. We went on this trip to Colomendi. Junior school, primary school, you know, we were all kids. And it was exciting, and I remember this girl, you know, we were fancy, she was just dead pretty, and I thought, oh, you know, she's nice, you know, she'll never want to be with me. So I always just looked at a distance, you know, and uh, admired her beauty, as you do. Uh, someone you, we called it, um, it wasn't an obsession, it was um, an infatuation. You're infatuated with someone, I was quite infatuated with this this, this girl, but uh, it never, and not never materialised, she was you know, that was that. But we were in this um, column end. Do you remember this teacher? Can't recall his name. We're all having our chocolate at the end of the night. We're all, you know, we're all going to be sitting around, you know, sitting in this circle and, and he's going to tell us a story. He's in the middle of this circle on a chair and we're all around him. You know what he said to us before the story? Right, it's quite unhygienic to wear your underwear. I mean, like, all right, yeah, maybe he's right. So could you all take your underwear off and, you know, have you, but you know, we had pajamas on, so it wasn't really that fucking, you know, it was no biggie to us, you know what I mean? Um, with pajamas on, but the girls, they had all like night dresses on, and I'm sitting right in this circle, right? While this teacher's in the middle, I'm looking at Nas and I'm thinking, I can't see her fan belt there, what's going on? And it is, wow, bit of a mad one, this like, <laughs> but then years later, I thought. That's it, he bastard, he's sat there. He's just clocking. You know, everyone's plums and fan belts and that fucking dirty fucking animal, yeah. You know, that's, this is going back, it's probably like, it's been late 70s, early 80s, you know. You know, and that, um, that came back to me a few years, a few years ago when I was writing my second book and I was reflecting on, you know, my journey through life. I don't know where this is going. It's just a, a story of like, you know, probably growing up and giving you a little bit more of a backstory. And, you know, I don't ever blame the situations I find myself in or the environments for, you know, what I became later on in life. You know, I was talking about um, 
gang culture and gang members. Now, to me, you know, being asked to go on, you know, ITV and talk about gang, gang members and gang life. And for me, I remember like being at home and I found it really difficult. I didn't want to be in the house. You know, there was a lot going on at home, so I wanted to be out a lot and I'd be standing on corners with a few of the lads. And we weren't gangs. We weren't um, terrorising the community. We were just shitting off, having a bevy, smoking a spliff, having a laugh, you know, getting chased by the plot and stuff like that. We weren't terrorising the community. You know, it's a different ball game today. You know, I don't know what, what's going on, what, what's, where's the mission link? You know, people are, Pulling pieces on each other and and ending ending lives and you know violence is like wow it's just, it's going galactic, honey. Yeah, just a little upload there. Really. I just thought while I'm shitting off, waiting for for Dougie to turn up and share a little a little story of what it was like for me back at school growing up. <laughs> Oh yeah, I got the fucking cane by Mr. Connor, Count Dracula. He's probably dead now. You know, he was probably in his late 40s back then, early 50s. He used to pinch the back of your leg. We used to have to wear shorts in school. We had shorts on. St. Ambrose, man. He pinched the back of your leg. A bit weird, isn't he? He used to come up behind kids and just pinch the back of their legs. Big smile. So they're all a bit noncy. You know, that's... When you come to think of it, but anyway, that's not why I use drugs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. Appreciate all your support again. Nice one.